Hey Popcorn Kid Crew, I'm going to share a really fun story with you called The Ant and the Elephant. It's written and illustrated by Bill Pete, and you're going to enjoy this story. It really gives us an example how important it is to help each other out. Did you tell yourself, did you tell yourself today, did you say I am the greatest? I know you did. Well, let Miss V have a chance. I am the greatest. Don't you forget, because you know I'm going to check in and ask you. All right, you guys, let's get into our story. I really think you're going to like this story. It's a beautiful story. One morning, a tiny ant crawled up a tall blade of jungle grass for a view of the river. All at once he was caught by a breeze that sent him sailing off into the swirling water. Just when it seemed he would be swept downstream and gone forever, the ant grabbed onto a snag and scrambled to safety. It looks like the wind was so strong it took the ant by surprise. There the ant remained stranded, wondering what he would do. When he spied a mud turtle creeping along the riverbank. Oh, Mr. Hardshell, called the ant in his wee small voice. Would you be so kind as to give me a little lift back to dry land? It's a nice day for a swim. The old turtle turned his head and said slowly, after a long look at the ant, he said, I've had my swim for today, and besides, if I went around helping everybody who was in trouble, I'd have no time left to relax. Then the turtle totted on his way to find a place where he could sun himself. Well, that's not nice. The ant just needed a little bit of help. It's okay. Let's keep going. When the turtle came to a flat, warm rock, he crept slowly up the edge. Suddenly, he went toppling backwards and landed upside down. Blast it all, he muttered. Dad, blame it. He began thrashing out with his legs desperately trying to right himself. But all that kicking could do was send him rocking about on his shell. And that was all. He's in trouble. Maybe if he had helped the ant in the first place, he wouldn't be in that situation. As he stretched his stringy neck looking about for help, the turtle spied a hornbill roosting in her high nest in a tree limb. Oh, Mr. Big Bill, he called, would you mind helping me back to my feet? With one flip of your beak, I'm sure you could do it. I could, snapped the bird, but I won't. This will teach you not to be so clumsy. Oh my goodness. All the bird had to do was just toss her beak and toss him over and flip him back on his feet. As she leaned down to say some more, the hornbill tipped the nest and her one big L rolled out tumbling all the way to the ground. Luckily, it landed in a clump of fluff, tough weeds, without so much as a crack. Thank goodness, she cried, when she found the egg all in one piece. Then seizing it in her beak, she fluttered with her wings as she tried to take off. But her oversized beak plus the cumbersome egg were too much of a load. She still kept on ferociously thrashing the air until her wings were worn and frazzled. She's 
trying to return her egg back to the nest. She's having difficulty doing it, guys. Have you read this story before? Do you like it so far? Let's keep on going. As the miserable bird sat there staring helplessly at the egg, a giraffe came striding along. Oh, Mr. Great Neck, she called. You've come just at the right time. If I perched on your head with the egg in my beak, you could carry us back to the nest. Indeed, no, scoffed the proud giraffe. If I did such a thing, how silly would I look? I'll have no one laughing at me. No, indeed. And Mr. Great Neck went on his way with his head held high, nibbling at the treetops. Mm. He was so intent upon the tasty leaves, he didn't notice the tangling, dangling vine until it twisted around one leg. Here now, snorted the giraffe with an angry kick. How dare you? The kick merely gave the vine an extra twist, which tightened its grist. Then in a fury, the giraffe began kicking wildly about with all four legs. The more he kicked, the more entangled he became. Finally, his legs were so tightly tied up in the vine, he couldn't bulge. What a mess. What a mess, guys. As he stood there in the tangle, he spied a lion heading his way. What good luck, thought the giraffe. With those great claws of his, he could rip this vine to shreds in one swipe. Oh, Mr. Big Paw, he called to the lion, just look at me. The lion took one list and then burst until a roaring laugh. Ho, 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 ho. That is so funny. Ho, ho, ho. I see what you mean. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And laughing merrily, he went on his way. Just kept on going through the jungle. The lion was still laughing to himself as he flopped down in a patch of shade for a bit of catnip. He flopped down with such a whomp, it upset a huge boulder, which was all set to topple. To the lion's surprise, it rolled over and came down right upon his tail. This is a boulder. It's a large rock. That's his tail. That sounds painful, guys. With a furious roar, he leaped to his feet, tugging and frantically to free himself. But he soon found it was useless to struggle. He could never get loose until he would be willing to part with his tail. As he sat there growling over his bad luck, a rhino came along, a rhinoceros. Oh, Mr. Horny Head, he called. Would you mind bumping this stupid boulder off my tail with one nudge of your great snout? It would do the trick. I would, said the rhino, if you could think of some way to return the favor. Right now, sighed the lion, all I can think of is my poor tail. Too bad, said the rhino, and he went lumbering off through the trees. And these guys are not helpful at all to their friends. The rhino never bothered to watch where he was going. With a great horn out in front, he went plowing straight ahead through the brambles and the brush. When all of a sudden, zump, he blundered head on into a stump 
with his great horn stuck deep into it. He wasn't paying attention. Oh, my goodness. All of the friends are stuck. What's happening in this jungle, guys? Everybody's stuck doing something. Out of my way, you stupid stump, he snorted. And with a furious lounge, he tried to knock over the stump. This drove the horn still even deeper. Then with a mighty tug, he tried pulling himself free, but the stump refused to let go. At last, the rhino realized he was helplessly stuck. So the rhino, the lion, the giraffe, and the hornbill, the turtle, and the ant were all left in deep trouble. That would have been that if a jolly big somebody hadn't decided to take a stroll through the jungle that day. Who do you think that is? Who's that big somebody? Give you a hint. Look, it was a huge elephant with such great spreading ears, he could hear the slightest sound, the faint rustle of a leaf, the least snap of a twig, or even the tiny voice of an ant calling. He reached his long trunk out over the river, inviting the ant to climb aboard, then carried him safely back to land. How can I ever thank you enough, cried the grateful ant. It was no big thing, said the elephant. But it was a big thing for me, said the ant. It was everything. And it scurried away through the grass. It's a wonderful thing to help. He saw his friend needed help, and he said, I can help you. If you can help an ugly old ant, squawked the hornbill, then at least you can do is put me put my lovely egg back in the nest. The very least I can do, agreed the elephant, and holding the egg gently in his trunk, he carried it up to the nest. It's a wonder you didn't crack it, snapped the bird, as she settled down in her nest. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, she got her egg back. She's settling in her nest. Did you guys hear her say thank you? Say now, chuckled the elephant when he came upon the giraffe. That's what I call a funny fix. It's not funny to me, snorted the giraffe. Not one bit funny. Then I'll try not to laugh, said the big fellow, searching through the vine with his trunk to get at the worst of the tangle. He said, I'm going to try not to laugh. He's probably laughing. Would you have laughed? I don't know. Maybe I would have laughed. I don't know. I don't know. It took a few minutes to undo the dozens of knots that gripped to those long legs. And once they were loose, the vine fell limply to the ground. Well, I must say it's about time, snorted the snooty giraffe as he went galloping and clopping away. It's about time. What about thank you? Well, what have we here, asked the elephant when he came to the lion. We have a big, stupid, bumbling boulder, growled the lion. That's what. Then be off, stupid boulder, and the huge tusker heaved the boulder into the air with his trunk and sent it tumbling. See? Sent it tumbling. Once he was free, the lion gave his tail a few switches to make sure it was working. What a relief, sighed the lion, someday when I'm in a better mood. I must remember to thank you. No hurry, said the elephant. 
He continued on his way through the jungle where he soon found the helplessly stuck rhino. I can pull you free, said the elephant, if your tail can stand one mighty tug. Right now, it's my snout I'm worried about, groaned the rhino, so jerk right away. Gripping the rhino's tail tightly in his trunk, the elephant reared back, and with one almighty jerk, the rhino went sailing free of the stump to land with one big blump. That was one well of a jerk, muttered the rhino. I hope you had some fun out of this. It was a pleasure, smiled the elephant, as he went merrily on his way. Elephant's helping everybody. He was enormously pleased with himself after all the good deeds he had done that day. Everyone has his troubles, he chuckled. Everyone but big me. I'll never get into a fix where I need help. That's one thing for sure. The elephant didn't suspect there was a deep ravine just ahead. It was too well hidden by the scatter flat ferns. A ravine is similar to a little river, it's water. Before he knew it, he tumbled straight into it, landing with a seven ton thud, shook the whole jungle. He was wedged so deep and in such a position that his trunk and his legs were useless. Serves me right, he muttered, for feeling so almighty big and all powerful. Now I'm the one who needs help. Help, he bellowed. Help, help, help. Then he waited anxiously for a reply. He waited for hours staring up at the sky until it faded into evening and a deep stillness settled over the jungle. Now Mr. Elephant needs help, guys. It was so quiet, his great spreading ears caught the sounds of footsteps. Tiny, tiny footsteps from somewhere up Above. Wow, tiny footsteps. Who's there? asked the elephant. It's me, said a wee small voice. The ant you rescued this morning and all my ant friends. 95,000 of them. I knew ants were amazingly strong, but surely you don't expect to lift me out of here. We can try, said the ants. Come on, my friends, let's go to work. Have you ever heard that ants may be tiny, but they're really strong? Suddenly, down the steep wall of the ravine came a teeming horde of ants swarming under the elephant. Then they all began chanting, Heave ho, heave ho, up you go, up you go. And to the elephant's amazement, he felt himself moving upward, slowly but surely, just an inch at a time. The tireless ants hoisted their huge burden up the wall. Hey, you can see all the ants. See all those little dots? Those are the ants. Heave ho, up you go, don't lose your grip, don't anybody trip. And at last, under a bright full moon, they sat the elephant down in the scatter flat ferns. That was tremendous, cried the elephant. I can't believe it. It was nothing, replied the 95,000 ants. It was nothing for you, said the elephant. 
but a mighty big thing for me. Now, if you'll climb aboard, I'll give you a ride back to your hill. Now, he wants to help ants. I'm not a bit tired, said one ant, but I would like to go for a ride. I've never ridden on an elephant. Neither have I, cried all the others. And they swarmed up the elephant's legs onto his back. Then away they went, harumpity, bumpity, clumpity, hump. The mighty big and the mighty small through the jungle together. The end. I like the way it ends. Then away they went, harumpity, bumpity, clumpity, hump. The mighty big and mighty small off through the jungle together. So it ended up where everyone needed everyone's help. And that's how we have, that's how life is. That's how we need each other, the big and the small. That's how we have our, our help. Our friends help each other. When we need help, don't ever say no to somebody. Say yes. If you can help someone, help them out. Here at the Popcorn Kit Crew, we're going to make sure that we continue to practice good character. And this will increase our skills and build us to be very good people. Popcorn Kit Crew, how'd you like that story? Thank you for listening. And you know what, guys? Miss V is still learning. I'm still learning how to work YouTube. I'm still learning how to present to you. I've never done anything like this before. But thank you for your patience and thank you for your kind comments. As always, one is in peace and love. A kiss. I'll see you soon.